Kate Heron, and we are going to talk a little bit about um, how to ace an interview. So a couple of things that we're going to go over are um, the outcomes, five different tips that we have on, on how to really excel at an interview, next steps, and then going over a couple of the common questions that we get here at the Career Center. So the learning objective, the learning outcome for this particular presentation is learning best practices for an effective interview. And so by the end of this presentation, we're hoping that that's what you would leave with. So the related competencies would be related to your career management. So that's how you feel about your career and moving forward with it. Critical thinking and problem solving, your oral and written communication, and then professionalism and your work ethic. So a couple of the things that are really important to know. So the tip one is know yourself. So that's really taking a very honest assessment of what your values and skills are. And it's really important to take an honest look at those. So that's your academics, so your degree here at Florida State, for example, any experiences, so those could be internships, part-time jobs, job shadowing, student organizations, um, any skills that you have, so certainly hard skills, but also soft interpersonal skills, um, campus involvement and leadership, so if you hold a leadership position within those student organizations, and what your goals are, where do you see yourself? Um, it's also important to look at your transferable skills. So a lot of us have worked in positions that are retail, customer, food service, and some of those positions don't necessarily land on a resume. But consider that maybe they should because of those transferable skills, right? So customer service, multitasking, working in a high um, uh, environment, what's the word? High pressure. High pressure environment, thank you, um, and conflict resolution. Um, it's also important to know the employer and the position. So knowing what your worth is, and then also being able to um, see what those employers are, are actually looking for. And so different ways to come up with that information is the company website. Very, very, very critical, we cannot emphasize this enough, is to do your research, right? So an easy way to do that is the company website. And that's looking at their mission, their vision, if they have clients, if they have products, to have a pretty solid understanding of what those things are. Also looking at resources like LinkedIn or Glassdoor, those are excellent resources to have um, electronically, but also people, right? Know your network, know your professional network, and those alumni who might be able to connect you. Because sometimes, and oftentimes, it helps to know somebody to be like, I can actually vouch for her, um, you, should actually, you should interview her. Um, the other things to keep in mind, are looking for organizational structure, and so what your position would be within that hierarchy, different locations, um, is, is there growth, is there uh, competitive pay, competitive compensation packages. The other thing is to dress professionally. And so different industries will have different definitions of what that particularly means, either for career fairs, information sessions, interviews, first day on the job, but this is a general idea of business professional for um, males and uh, for, for females. Um, you can see that from these two photos that their suits, first of all, they are both wearing suits. They are of a um, neutral tone, so grays, blacks, browns, charcoal, colors like that. Um, that they have comfortable shoes, so certainly if you're going to career fairs, it's important that you feel comfortable in what you are wearing because there will be a lot of walking around. And then also keep in mind that some people might have sensitivities with smells, and so that would relate to like colognes and perfumes, that they want to con you want them to concentrate on you and not your lovely perfume. And then also practice. So practice what it is that you're going to say. Um, so one of the things to think about is don't get hung up on the easy things, right? So in an interview, maintain good eye contact, have a good handshake, right? Those are small things that can make a huge difference, but it also matters what you say. And so those things would follow typically the STAR method. So situation, task, action, and result. And so going through education, experience, students, organizations, leadership, skills that you have, projects that you've conducted, to say what that situation was, so set it up for us, tell us a little bit about it, what that task was that you had to complete, the action, so what did you actually do, and what was the result. 
And it's important to always be honest about what that was, but also to end positively. So the last thing would be to finish strong. Nothing will kill an interview more is that when they inevitably ask you, do you have any questions for me? And you say, no, it's okay, I'm good. You should always, always have questions. And those questions should be related to a couple of different things. One, are things that you generally want to know the answer to. Two, um, might be to demonstrate that you have actually done research on their company and that you are in fact the person for that job. And that's based off of those skills and competencies. And so really knowing what that role requires related to the positions that you've already had, either directly or those transferable skills that we were talking about. Things to avoid talking about, certainly in that first interview, is anything related to a compensation package. So that'd be salary, paid time off, um, any of the perks. So perks would be related to um, signing bonuses, travel expenses, things of that nature. And then to really, really finish strong is to send a thank you note, um, ideally, through snail mail, but also through email. Um, some of the most successful students that I personally have seen have sent an email thank you note within 24 hours, and then have dropped a, a paper thank you note in the mail within 48. Um, and then also, evaluate your performance, right? It's very rare for people to just interview naturally, and so taking a, another honest look about what you did really well and continuing those things, and then also some things to improve upon for another opportunity to interview. So some of the next steps that we would definitely encourage all of you to take advantage of are going to the Career Center uh, website's The First Job Interview Guide um, for preparing, and then also offer some sample questions. Again, it's really important to, to have those questions to ask them. And then taking advantage of the mock interview program. And that's something that we can honestly not um, emphasize enough. So here at the Career Center, that you can sign up for a mock interview either in person here in the Career Center, through Skype, or on phone, uh, through phone calls. Um, and it's practicing a real life interview. And so you would do that through Handshake. You would sign up for a mock interview through Handshake, upload a resume and a cover letter so that we can customize those questions. And then we will run you through the ringer so that you are prepared for the real thing. <clears throat> so a couple of the common questions that we get are how do I handle the question of what are my weaknesses? So we all have weaknesses, that's, and we all have strengths, and that's a pretty natural thing, right? But how do we address those? And it's again, it's very important to, honest, to be honest about them, but also to end positively. So perhaps one of your weaknesses is that you're very opinionated. But if you're opinionated because you really want to um, do the best thing for the company, um, that it comes from the right place, that it's based off of X, X, and X, but what you've learned from that experience is that you need to take a step back, listen to your community, listen to your group, and take their feedback in as well. That would be a very rough version of how to answer that question. How long should I wait to follow up about the position after the interview? <clears throat> My rule of thumb is about two weeks, um, and then to do that through phone call. Uh, it's, a, it's a little bit... Um, easier to avoid an email than it is a phone call. Um, so I would do that as my first touch point and follow up with an email, but you don't want to keep emailing or keep calling them. But it is absolutely appropriate to follow up after you send the thank you note, which should be within 24 to 48 hours. And what are some questions I should ask the interviewer? So there are pretty common questions like um, what is a typical day? What are the um, qualifications that you're looking for? But those questions you should almost already know based off of your research and just honestly knowing what good skill sets are to have in those. So they might be related to, um, if I were to take on this position, what would be the training process? Um, what would that look like? Or how often would I work with other group members? Or would I be cross-trained? So those are a couple of the sample questions that you should ask. So that concludes this particular presentation. We have several others as part of this particular certificate. And thanks so much.